Excellent. Hey guys, how's it going? And welcome to Probing Paul. This is my monthly Q&A video. I answer questions that you guys have, technology or otherwise. So thank you to everyone who submitted questions last month, actually a little more than a month ago because I did not do Probing Paul in May because May was a little challenging for me. I've been raising a baby and stuff like that. But getting back into things today, so feel free to check out my old Probing Pauls if you have never seen any of them. It goes pretty far back these days. So although it's already June, this is technically the Probing Paul for May and I might do another one for June. So if you do have questions to ask me, leave them down in the comment section down below. I also went to Twitter this morning and asked for some questions there. So I have kind of a mix today, some questions from Twitter, some from last month's video. Let's get right into it. The first question is from Excalibur who says what made you want to be a tech youtuber and what did you do before YouTube uh, that's a good question I don't sometimes I think about that myself and I'm like what well, how did I get into this you guys might be familiar with Newegg TV that's where I started out making YouTube videos about technology and that was for Newegg and then I branched off and went independent in uh, 2013 and 2014 we had a bit of an overlap there um, so what made me want to be a tech youtuber I think was probably some of the initial success that I had through Newegg I had a regular job a regular paying job at Newegg and then I transitioned over to start making YouTube videos for Newegg and I was lucky enough to be able to make them with some degree of independence. And I tried to also make videos that I felt like I would watch if I was interested in watching videos about computer parts and stuff. Fortunately, people seemed to like that way of doing things. So that was what kind of gave me the confidence to be like, yeah, maybe this is something that I could do on my own and independently. And that's what I eventually ended up doing. I had several other jobs that I did at Newegg. Uh, I was a systems analyst. I was in customer service for a while. It was kind of cool. I was able to shift to different jobs as I worked there to sort of expand my horizons and learn new things. Prior to that, uh, I didn't have much of a regular job. I, I did college, and then I did some random jobs after that, including working at Dave & Buster's for a while. So I, I guess that sort of sums that up. Next question is from Ted Hart Davis, and this one comes from Twitter, and he asks, how are you going to introduce your child to technology? Because I, I do have a child now, a little baby. Uh, her name is Hannah. Uh, I have a personal update video where I showed a bit of footage of her and stuff, and she's crazy cute and everything, and that's why I haven't been making as many videos the past month, because looking after her has been been uh, a lot of work. Uh, it takes a lot of time and dedication and everything. So back to your question, though, how am, I, how am I planning to introduce her to technology? I haven't thought about that too much at this point. I, I know it's gonna be inevitable, but I think one of the best ideas I've seen was actually Linus's idea of introducing his kids to technology and sp more specifically video games. And he wanted to start early and actually have his kids play video games, but like old video games, and then slowly sort of bring them through and get them up to speed with current video games. So they could sort of experience that transition with video games for those of us who have been playing games for, you know, 20 plus years, they've changed a lot over time. And um, in some ways that's good, in some ways that's bad. As for technology in general, that's actually a really good question and maybe something that if you guys have suggestions for me, you could leave in the comments section. I don't know if there's a whole lot of technology that's baby related, especially like newborn or infant related, but I'd be open to doing that uh, here and there. I, again, I don't want to make my channel all about baby stuff or even focus on that too much because I know a lot of people are more interested in the technology. Uh, if you guys have any suggestions, please leave them in the comments section down below. Next few questions are also from Twitter and these are all also from fellow tech YouTubers. So this this is from Lauren, uh, Tasty PC TV, who's been doing tech YouTube for quite a while. Though she was on hiatus for a while, but I think she's making videos again. But she just asked, what's your favorite announcement from Computex? I did a single Computex video uh, about the uh, AMD announcements, the, the keynote that they did where they confirmed the 3900X, as well as several other CPUs from the Ryzen uh, 3000 series platform. I have a video on that if you guys want to check it out. But I think that for me was the big announcement, and I honestly didn't see a whole lot of other stuff besides that. I mean, there was other stuff. Don't get me wrong. There's lots of videos on it. There's lots of people who were there who made videos on it. I was going to do some sort of summation videos and I didn't. That's because of the baby, honestly. But also that I, I didn't find anything that really leaked out and grabbed me. Um, there wasn't any huge announcements from NVIDIA. Uh, Intel was like, hey, we have 10 nanometers still coming in the future. And we we're like, all right, tell us when you have products to ship. AMD is the only one who's like, here's our products. Here's the specs. Here's when we're going to launch them. Here's some SKUs and some, some some demos and everything. Of course, we're still waiting for independent reviews, independent testing, especially comparing the 3000 series stuff to what Intel currently has on offer. So that'll be exciting. Other than that, there were a few things here and there, but nothing that I felt like was mind blowing. 
going. So uh, I, I saw a few people saying that, that Computex was a little bit of a letdown this year. And maybe that's true to an extent, or maybe people just had really high expectations, but um, that, that's what it came down to for me. And one more question here from Christopher Yi, who also has a tech YouTube channel. If you guys aren't familiar, he has some really good videos, youtube.com slash Christopher Yi. He said, how do you deal with burnout as a content creator? And this is actually a hard question because burnout, I feel like can come from multiple sources, or at least for me, it has come from multiple sources and it can be derived from feeling like you don't have any good ideas to feeling like you have have ideas, but maybe those ideas aren't good enough to feeling like, you know, YouTube itself, the algorithm or whatever, isn't treating you as kindly as it could. And then there's also like life stuff that can happen and come along and be very distracting. And you can feel like, man, I need to make a video, but there's so much other stuff going on. And you know, you have to split your time and figure out how much time you have to invest in a video versus how much time you have to invest in real life stuff. And uh, I've dealt with all of these in various levels over the years. And I think for me, it boils down to making content that I feel good about. Um, that and exercise. <laughs> Getting exercise is very often something that if I'm feeling like down, I'm like, you know what? Just get some more exercise and suddenly you feel like you have more energy and everything. So that's one solution. But for me, I think it, it comes down to if I'm really feeling burnt out or like I'm just not feeling passionate about the content that I'm making, that I need to make something that's either different, either slightly or completely different. And also that I need to sort of take all the pressures away that you might feel pressured about when making YouTube videos. How many views am I getting? Are people enjoying the content and hitting the thumbs up button? Uh, am I getting lots of engagement and feedback? Um, I mean, very often it, it just comes back to views. Is the video resonating with people and doing well? And I try to set all that stuff aside and just make a video that I wanna make. And I don't care how many views it gets. I don't care if people like it. All I care about is if I liked the video and if I enjoyed making the video and if I felt fulfilled by whatever I created and screw what anyone else thinks or what YouTube thinks or anything. I just wanna make something that I feel good about. And I think in times in the past when I've really felt burnt out, just pushing all that other stuff aside and focusing on making content that I wanna do uh, has, has been the solution that's gotten me through those those harder times. Getting back to some questions from last month's Probing Paul, Wissam Al-Mandili asks, uh, Hey Paul, I got temperature spikes on my CPU, Ryzen 7 2700X. Use a stock CPU cooler. What do you think is causing these spikes? By the way, you're amazing. Thank you, Wissam, for that final comment. I, I think you're amazing too. First off, with Ryzen, there is a temperature uh, offset that's built in by def default. It's not as much with the 2000 series as it was with the 1000 series. I think it's only like 10 degrees the 2700X. So make sure that the software you're using is up to date to make sure you're getting good reporting. If you want to be absolutely sure, you should use the latest version of the Ryzen Master Utility because that's the stuff that's made by AMD and that should be giving you good reporting as far as what your temperatures are. If you're using third-party software to monitor that like IDA64 or Hardware Info or something like that, make sure you have the most up-to-date versions of that to make sure you're getting good and ac accurate reporting. I like Hardware Info 64 because it will show you uh, both the offset temperature and the actual temperature. The reason they do an offset is so that your system thinks that the CPU is hotter than it is to run the fans at a higher speed to cool down the CPU more. And when the CPU is cooler, then it will overclock itself more with the XFR extended frequency range, and that will get you better performance. That's that's why they did that uh, specifically. That said, if you actually are getting crazy temperature spikes, I would double check the actual physical seating of your heatsink on the CPU itself, because you might have partial contact there, or maybe the thermal paste got messed up or something like that. Just double check to make sure that it's seated firmly, that it's screwed all the way down so you have good pressure and contact uh, can help solve that problem because what you might be dealing with is the CPU trying to overclock itself with XFR, temperature spikes go up, and then the CPU is like, whoa, it's too hot in here, and it dials stuff back down, and then the temperature spike goes back down. Hopefully, one of those two solutions is what's causing your problem. Next question here from Geometric Gaming. I've got a question. I'm getting ready to build, buy a new graphics card for my computer. I'm worried I won't get all the drivers from my previous card off my computer. It may screw with my performance. I was wondering what's the best way to remove all of those old drivers and make sure I get them all. Your answer here, and it's one that I've, uh, I think I've talked about before, is DDU, or Display Driver Uninstaller. It's available for download from Guru of 3 d Gets pretty regular updates. I think this, actually, the most recent version is only like a week or so old. And in order to run DDU properly, in order to remove all of the current 
graphics drivers that you currently have, whether you're talking AMD or Nvidia, is to reboot your system into safe mode. And if you want to boot your computer in safe mode, I would recommend checking this video out. Uh, I feel like this is an underappreciated video that I've made. There's, there's some lots of good advice in this video, but if you hold down the shift key while you go to restart with Windows 10, it'll allow you to access the uh, advanced startup menu. And from there, you can go to the troubleshoot thing here. And then from there, you can go to advanced options. And then from there, you can actually tell it to boot into your UEFI. So if you're not able to get into your UEFI or BIOS uh, by pressing delete on system startup, this is another way to get into that. Or if you go to more recovery options, you go to startup settings, then it will restart. And then when it restarts, uh, you wanna hit four to enable safe mode. It will boot into safe mode, then you can run display driver on installer, and then it will clean all the drivers off and then restart. And then you'd be good to install your new drivers for your new graphics card. Next question is from Roy Evans. He said, I know this is probing Paul. I actually have a question for Joe, the editor who's right there, fortunately. I uh, said, I recently found your channel. I was hoping you could do a live stream of your process with editing one of Paul's videos from start to finish. I could find it entertaining and also learn about potential problems that may arise. So he's asking Joe to do a live stream. Joe, do you have a, do you have a, do you have a Twitch channel or something? How would that work if it's a time sensitive video? That's true. What if there's personal information that he's gonna live stream to you guys or something like that? Usually he has to redact a bunch of stuff. You know, I'm like running around naked back here and stuff. <laughs> 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 But fortunately, uh, I think we have maybe a few solutions. You can tweet to him on Twitter, Joe underscore editing. And, and if he's gonna do that live stream thing, maybe he'll let you know there. But I think this is actually an interesting idea for a video It's just like kind of talk about the process that we have here for making video since we film stuff here and then Joe edits and he usually edits remotely. And sometimes he's here with me uh, to film stuff and then he takes the footage with him. Other times I film stuff and then I transcode it and then send it to him with Resilio Sync. So there's a couple options there, uh, but a good idea for a future video. Well, we'll keep that in mind. Not to be a shame this plug or anything, but I do share everything I know on my YouTube, if they care. It just is you, oh, your YouTube. Or just follow Joe's YouTube channel, which he has, which I watch all the time. No. You didn't know I have one till now. Hey, you've <laughs> never watched one of these Probing Paul videos, so, so there. <laughs> Just a few more questions. I'm gonna to try to go through these quickly. JP asks, uh, hi Paul, how is life as a parent? Should we expect baby videos from now on? I've gotten a ton of uh, questions about the baby and comments and stuff. And I wanted to say thank you to everyone who has sent their support and everything. Again, I'm not planning to make a ton of videos about the baby. I did sort of a life update one uh, a couple weeks ago. As for life as a parent, uh, it's really hard in a lot of ways. I think for me, the biggest challenge has been lack of sleep. I am very used to getting a a full night's sleep and when I get a full night's sleep I'm usually pretty okay to deal with just about anything for the most part except when I get frustrated making videos but uh, that's a se se separate thing. Point being without a full night's sleep or with sleep that's broken up into like two hour three hour chunks uh, that has that has been the hardest thing for me to deal with. It makes simple things harder and it's very trying and taxing on like how much patience you have and 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 like just reasoning abilities and like problem solving abilities. So that's been the biggest challenge for me when it comes to life as a parent. Other than that, of course, I have a new baby, baby daughter and she's like awesome and beautiful. And you know, you look at her and, and all those wonderful things. So uh, yeah, it's, it's challenging for sure, but uh, it's been very rewarding as well. And we're getting through it. Question here from Francisco Illingworth, who says, hey Paul, don't know if you've answered this before, but where does excellent at the start of your videos come from? Is there a funny story behind it? Um, uh, well, you could look, uh, so like a month or two ago, I did a video about Firewire and capturing some of my old content that I have on DV tapes. And from there, I linked to a couple of my old student films from like back in like early 2000s. This is the beginning of one of them. And uh, so I've had this in mind for quite some time. I'm not gonna tell you this is exactly where it was taken from, cause obviously I wouldn't do that, but there is a scene I will link in the video description from Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. It's right here. Put them in the aisle. But hopefully that answers your question. It is inspired by the classic Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure starring Keanu Reeves and Alex Winter. And the last question here from Epic Anime who asks, how many times have you and Kyle smoked a blunt before live streams? It's a good question, kind of incriminating. Uh, the answer would be zero because uh, rolling blunts takes time. But guys, that's gonna wrap it up for this episode of Probing Paul. Thank you so much for watching. And of course, if you have questions for me to answer next month or probably later in June, uh, leave them down in the comment section below. Thank you again for watching. I am going to go and take a nap.
Goodbye.